there as well for the very latest information. Uh, Brent, while I do have you right now still on the phone, um, what is the mood from where you're at right now as far as what you're seeing? You said a few moments ago you did see uh, what appeared to be some students uh, crying. What is the mood from maybe uh, more adults who are near that scene as well right now? Well, there are some adults who are even crying right now. Uh, clearly, everyone appears to be on their phone trying to get a hold of maybe loved ones who are inside the uh, the school right now. And I can have uh, maybe here pan off the camera, and we can show you a little bit about what is actually happening here. Uh, you can see some of the, the parents here who have gathered, uh, including this woman right here who, uh, you know, it looks like she has, uh, you know, her, her cell phone to her ear, and she is uh, on the phone. This is a scene that we have seen uh, so often here, uh, parents talking on the phone, uh, trying to get more information. Uh, at, at this point, Mike, there are still uh, individuals leaving the high school uh, in a very slow, methodical way, uh, and that is happening uh, under the escort, we are told, uh, by the first responders who are on scene. Uh, you saw them a little bit earlier uh, they were walking across the street. Uh, we know that when this happens, the detectives and officers are trying to uh, speak with them to get as much information as they can uh, about where the suspect may be. Uh, they need to talk to as many people as quickly as possible uh, to figure out what has happened. And at this point, uh, we can uh, tell you that uh, you know many of the officers who at one point had their guns drawn they no longer have their guns drawn. It appears that they have now put those uh, assault rifles into uh, their vehicles right now. Uh, again, we're still uh, quite a distance away from where this is all happening, but uh, I can tell you it appears that the uh, officers who did have their weapons out, that they, are, um, they have now put those guns away. Now, we are seeing more officers, again, uh, starting to arrive, including uh, members of the Portland Police Bureau's gun task force. Again, this is just an all-hands-on-deck situation. You can see these officers starting to get out. Those officers who just got out of that car, they are with the Portland Police Bureau's gun task force, so they are just now starting to arrive on this scene uh, with uh, officers and deputies from uh, across the, the region here. Uh, there are some homicide detectives that I am starting to see arriving on scene. Uh, you know, we are in a position right now, we are uh, along Southwest Cherry Park Road. This leads to the high school, uh, and you can see some of the officers now putting on their ballistic vests. Uh, we are still, again, waiting on a, an update from the, uh, the Troutdale Police Department spokesperson. Uh, we do know that uh, some other media representatives uh, from different agencies are now starting to arrive, including a spokesperson with the Portland Field Office of the FBI. Uh, the, uh, the mood where we are at this intersection is starting to calm down uh, a little bit, uh, you know, but the, the problem is no one is, is getting answers, uh, and it appears that the FBI agents are now on scene. You can see this FBI agent right there has put on his jacket, uh, clearly identifying this person as an FBI agent. So uh, FBI is here on scene at the uh, report of an active shooter at uh, Reynolds High School in Troutdale. Uh, again, the details remain uh, very sparse in terms of uh, any victims. We have not heard of any victims. Of course, we did see the life flight helicopter fly overhead uh, and land at a nearby field. Brent, I'm going to let you go for just one minute so you can maybe speak with one of the parents uh, on the side there who does have a phone. Uh, maybe we can find out what the notification process was this morning. How quickly were they notified and exactly what were they told? So I'm going to go ahead and recap and cut you loose for just a second. We'll get you uh, back on the phone, keep the phone live, and we'll get back with you and talk to you in just one second uh, after you go ahead and speak with uh, some of the parents who have been pushed back beyond that crime. Tape. What we can show you in that live shot that we still have up there is that we have seen a number of new officers arrive on the scene uh, pulling out their weapons. I did see one uh, pull out a revolver from his a holster and move closer to that area. And if you are just joining us, reports of shots fired at Reynolds High School. That is in Troutdale, 16 miles east of Portland. Uh, we can tell you the last scheduled day of school would have been tomorrow. June 11th uh, on a Wednesday. We are pushed back a few blocks 
uh, from the scene. You can see more what we believe are to be uh, children, maybe staff, students being moved from across the right hand side of your screen across the street there to the left hand side. Uh, multiple officers uh, reporting on the scene right now. Uh, we can tell you that life flight has been seen flying above the scene. It is being called at this point a tactical event. It is being investigated though as an active shooter situation. That is the very latest that we had as of just a few minutes ago. We have not been told that that has changed. So at this point an active shooter situation at Reynolds High School in Troutdale. Some students being escorted out of the school still we believe a representative from the FBI uh, is also now on scene. And uh, as we said, uh, a shooting at Reynolds High School in Troutdale. SWAT teams from multiple agencies are still arriving. The FBI, as we said, is on scene. Calls came in on this active shooter just after 8 this morning. It was described at that time as a tactical event. Life flight, as we said, has been seen hovering above the area. Law enforcement telling this that this is an active shooter situation. We have seen homicide detectives and parents trying to get a hold of their loved ones. We have seen people on the phone at this point. We do not know what the notification process has been as far as the school district and students and parents at that school. But we have seen people on the phone. We don't know if it's parents trying to get a hold of their students or if it's the district trying to get a hold of parents, letting them know what the situation is at this point. So that's where we are right now. We continue to give you live continuous coverage uh, of exactly what is happening. And as you see our Brent Weisberg right there on the scene, let's go back to Brent live. Brent, what can you tell us? Hey, Mike, we have some parents here and a, and a grandfather. I want to start with you. Uh, first, what is your name? And tell us, uh, you've been in contact with your son inside the school. Yeah, he texted me this morning on Facebook and let me know what was going on. I got up here as fast as I could. What did he tell you had happened? He just told me that there was a shooting and he knows that a teacher has been shot. But uh, that's really all the information that they know. They were locked up in some kind of a panic room um, to keep the kids safe. And that's, I just flew up here, you know. What was your son's message to you? He said, Dad, there's a shooting at the school. And, you know, I was, my first response was, I'm on my way, you know. And he said that he was also, what did the teacher do? Uh, that, that, he, didn't, he didn't tell me anything about what the teacher did. His own teacher just made sure that all the kids were ushered in, locked away, and kept safe. Have you been able to be in touch with your son at this point? Yeah, I'm, I'm still contacting him on my phone through text. They don't have any signal to be able to give a phone call or anything, but he's been texting me through Facebook. Where is he right now? Are they still hunkered down? Uh, yeah, he, he is right now, but it looks like the kids are starting to get ushered out. Uh, the police said that they're going to be uh, you know, getting the kids or contacting the parents, make sure that the kids get home safe. When you got here, describe, uh, you were here before we got here. We saw you, uh, one of the first people here. What did you see in terms of the police response? Uh, well, they're, they're, you know, pretty serious about it, obviously, but uh, the, the police aren't going to be telling anybody anything either right now until they know exactly what's going on themselves. So. And did your son say anything about the shooter? Did he know uh, anything like how many shots had been fired? So far he said that he heard six shots being fired, but th that was it. Your son told you that he had heard six shots fired? Yes, yes. Did, they dis did he describe what type of weapon it may have been? No, they, they were all locked up as soon as they heard what was going on. So I'm pretty sure that the kids are pretty freaked out about this. So all they know is that they just want to go home. Alrighty, we will be in touch with you guys. And as soon as you hear more about your son, uh, has he told you, have they been evacuated yet? Uh, no, he hasn't been evacuated yet, but they're probably doing one classroom at a time just to keep a little bit of order around here. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Mike, again, uh, we do know that officials with the Portland Field Office of the FBI, they here are on scene too. You can see the just the number of of law enforcement officials who are now arriving on scene continues to double almost by the minute. Uh, this is just a, a sea of red and blue uh, flashing lights here along uh, Southwest Cherry Park Road. We are still waiting on uh, 
an official word on what has happened. You heard that uh, gentleman right there say his son uh, says that there is at least one victim in all this. We have not heard official confirmation from uh, any official persons about that. Uh, we do know uh, that this is being investigated as an active shooter situation here at Reynolds High School. Uh, and you keep referring to the number of law enforcement uh, uh, officers who are on scene. Uh, we have an ability to kind of look at the dispatching uh, computer system. Uh, I can say uh, just from an, our assessment, it appears that there is definitely more than 60, probably close to uh, 100 law enforcement officials from uh, throughout the region on scene here. Uh, again, this is being investigated as a reported active shooter situation at uh, Reynolds High School. Many of the parents uh, have gathered here where we are hoping to get any word on this situation. Uh, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office uh, says that the SWAT team is on scene. We do know that the Clark County SWAT team was one of the first uh, responding agencies to get here as well too. So uh, just uh, a lot of activity happening here. We have seen students being escorted from the high school going across the street where they are being interviewed by some of the investigators trying to figure out what has happened. Uh, I can tell you again we have seen most of the responding deputies and police officers starting to put away their weapons. We, uh, we don't see any of them running around like we did in the moments immediately after when we got here. Uh, we are at this point uh, just starting to see uh, some uh, media liaisons in this car right there. Um, that is the spokesperson for Oregon State Police. Uh, there I saw the spokesperson with the FBI and the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office inside that back car. So we again are hoping to get some more information from those individuals as soon as we have it. Uh, but again, very few details being able to are, are being are very few details are uh, being released at this point just because this is still unfolding. Uh, so parents, if you are in this area, if you do have children in this area, you are asked to at this point. Uh, and actually, I'm going to walk over here.